Hello and welcome to the Daily Comic and Collectible, episode 575. Now today, the collectible of the day is the Mattel Creations, Marvel Comics, Hot Wheels, Character Cars, Spider-Man, Spider-Verse, Five-Pack Die-Cast Vehicles. Get into the swing of Hot Wheels Character Cars with our five-pack of webheads. These casting feature realistic styling and original designs that stand out in any concrete jungle. The paint and deco schemes make them instantly recognizable. They're all inspired by fan-favorite characters and their unique personalities and skills. Start a collection or expand your current one with these five 164 scale vehicles arriving in a unique case pack. In fact, you might want to catch two in your web so you can open one and leave the other one in mint condition. When you order this set, you'll receive the following character cars. The Miles Morales sports car style debuted in 2017 and was designed by Brian Benedict. The Spider-Gwen sports car style debuted in 2019 and was designed by Tyler Cherist. Then the Spider-Man sports car style debuted in 2014, designed by Brian Benedict. Then we have the Venom Baja truck style, debuted in 2014 and was also designed by Brian Benedict. And lastly, the Spider-Man proto suit sports style, similar to the Miles Morales, and it debuted in 2017 and was designed by Brian Benedict. This set comes in a collector's friendly display box and was released in 2022 by Mattel Toys. Now, the comic of the day is Marvel Team-Up, Volume 1, Issue Number 90, with the cover date of February 1980, but was released in November of 1979, with story by Stephen Grant, art by Mike Vosberg, and cover by Al Milgram. This story is titled, Death on the Air. The story opens with Peter Parker taking Sissy Ironwood to the Empire State University Technology Science Exhibit. As they enter the hall, they see the Beast, who's currently an Avenger, at the center of the group of adoring co-eds. Peter wonders how the Beast managed to attract so many women. Don't those women, he asks enviously, have any self-respect? Sissy, however, does not reply, for she has already joined the women herself. As Peter resigns himself to viewing the exhibits alone, two sinister figures look down into the hall from the mezzanine. Killer Shrike tells the bizarre modular man that it would have been easier and less risky to come after the show closed. But the modular man replies that he must get the device he needs as soon as possible. Otherwise, he could remain trapped in his strange body forever, and Shrike could lose any chance of being cured of his amnesia. That's when the modular man recalls how his experiments and a molecular dissolution backfired, causing his molecules to drift apart, so that he had to build a specially ionized metal skeleton to keep his body together. He thought that the group called the Conspiracy might be able to cure him, but they only provided him with his name and introduced him to Shrike before they were destroyed. Then, the modular man discovered that he could cure himself with a microwave-driven cellular condenser. Once he's cured, he declares he will help Shrike to find out his past before he was hired by the conspiracy. When the modular man sees the case containing the condenser, Peter Parker happens to be standing in front of it. Peter feels his spider sense tingle and heads for a convenient place to change into the Spider-Man costume. Shrike and the Modular Man are pleased when Peter leaves, and the Modular Man quickly descends into the gallery 
to steal the object. Unfortunately, an alarm connected to the showcase starts to ring when the Modular Man shatters the glass. Spider-Man attacks, but Killer Shrike slams him in from behind, hurling him into the adjutant room over the beast's head. The beast quickly sheds his street clothes, leaps away from the flock of admirers, and asks Spider-Man what is going on. Spider-Man points out the two criminals making their way through the crowd. Then the modular man sheds his overcoat, revealing his skeleton-like body. The beast attacks him, and Spider-Man tackles Shrike. The battle is brief, but intense, and the beast is left unconscious after a jolt from Shrike's electro claws. The modular man explains that he cannot feel pain, and that his body has several detachable modules, including a poison gas gun. Spider-Man tries to avoid breathing the gas, but Shrike uses both of his electro claws simultaneously to hit Spider-Man with a powerful electric blast. That's when Spider-Man falls to the floor, unconscious. And when Beast attempts to rise, the Modular Man knocks him out again with a double-fisted punch to the back of the head. Then, the condenser in hand, the two thieves escape. The onlookers help Spider-Man and the Beast up, and a physician is summoned. Fortunately, the Beast's special metabolism quickly heals his concussion, while Spider-Man has suffered only minor damage. The doctor knows that the thieves stole only the cellular condenser. He cannot understand why anyone would want it, because it will not work without a massive flux of microwaves to power it. Nevertheless, it is his only prototype. He says he would like it returned. Spider-Man and the Beast agree to try to retrieve it, but then Spider-Man remembers that he was at the exhibition on a date. He asks the Beast to track the two criminals down alone, saying that he will join them later. The Beast wagers $10 that he won't, and Spider-Man takes the bet as he departs. Unknown to the Beast, Spider-Man had put a spider tracer on him, and he chuckles to himself as he changes into his street clothes. A few minutes later, Peter rejoins Sissy and walks her home. She says that seeing the Beast was the most fun that she's had in ages. Then, she invites Peter to watch television with her tomorrow night. She would be studying for a math exam, she says, but the cable is adding new channels, including some transmitted from foreign countries by satellite. Knowing that he will be on his mission, Peter says that he may not be able to make it, so Sissy neglects to kiss him goodnight and closes the door behind her. The next day, in a midtown Manhattan hotel room, Killer Shrike and the Modular Man make plans to find a power source for the inoperative condenser. The Modular Man notes that the new cable channels should supply all the energy they need. Thus, seven minutes before the channels go on the air, they're hovering in a helicopter above the Empire State Building's television antenna. All the satellite transmissions to and from the cable network have to go through this antenna, says the Modular Man. So using a microwave dish, Shrike will collect the power from the incoming and outgoing transmissions and beam it at the Modular Man. Meanwhile, on the ledge of a building not far away, sits the Beast, with binoculars, observing the helicopter. He deduced that the cable hookups at the Empire State Building were the only available source of powerful microwaves. Just then, Spider-Man taps him on the shoulder. Glum at losing $10, the Beast hands the binoculars to Spider-Man. As they watch, they see Shrike swoop towards the antenna and position the dish. When the button is pressed inside the studio to turn on the new channels, the air around the antenna is ionized by the redirected microwaves. Spider-Man clambers rapidly up the side of the building, but by the time he attacks Shrike, the dish has done its job. The Modular Man has begun to draw the power directly into himself. And there is nothing Spider-Man can do about it. As the Beast joins Spider-Man, Killer Shrike connects with a powerful punch that knocks Spider-Man off the building. The Beast catches him, 
but they both plummet towards the street. Spider-Man is unconscious, so the Beast frantically looks for his web shooters. Quickly figuring out how to activate them, he snags the building with a web line and swings back towards Shrike. With Spider-Man over his shoulder, he slams into the criminal's midsection with both feet. Spider-Man revives, but then a loud explosion from the helicopter draws their attention upward. That's when Spider-Man and the Beast are startled to see the modular man, grown to gigantic size, dropping down from the helicopter. Shrike is bewildered, but the modular man declares that this was his plan all along to become a being of pure energy. Using the modified molecular condenser and the concentrated microwaves, he will soon free himself from all bodily limitations and enjoy power beyond that known to any man. Killer Shrike panicked and asks, what about me? The giant modular man contemptuously swats him off the building. Fortunately, Spider-Man snags the unconscious criminal and hauls him to safety. The Beast says that they dare not approach the modular man, which would be like walking into a microwave oven. The modular man says that he will soon begin his reign of terror. All the human vermin that crawl on the earth will know and fear him. Spider-Man and the Beast try to think of a way to deal with the madman, and the Beast suggests that a jolt of lightning might scramble him as it would a television transmission. Unfortunately, the sky happens to be clear. So thinking fast, they pick up the unconscious killer Shrike, bring his electro claws together, and hit the modular man with a bolt of electricity. Instantly, circuits and transistors overload, and a tremendous burst of energy explodes the modular man. When the smoke clears, all that remains of him is a charred man-sized steel skeleton. If the television transmitter was working, says the Beast, the modular man has been cabled into half the homes in the city. In the meantime, having regained consciousness, Shrike suddenly soars away. But Spider-Man tells the Beast to let him go. It is enough that they stopped and probably killed his partner. Unfortunately, it was a disagreeable experience, he says as he swings away, even if they had little choice in what they had to do. This story is continued in Marvel Team-Up Annual, issue number two. Geek Fact Killer Shrike and Modular Man discuss the destruction of their former employers, the Conspiracy. They were killed in Rampaging Hulk, volume one, issue number eight, from April of 1978. Bonus Geek Fact Killer Shrike recalls how he previously shorted out his armor in a fight. That was in Rampaging Hulk, Volume 1, Issue Number 1, from January of 1977. Advertising Ad Fact! New from Star, Star Wars. Wars! Now from the greatest movie of all time comes the Kenner Star Wars Toy Collection. Wow! And here's a small sample of a few items you can get, like the Star Wars Death Star Space Station. Whoa! Four floors of Star Wars excitement, including a moving trash compactor, clicking laser cannon, elevator, escape hatch, and trash monster. Or the new Star Wars Droid Factory. Build hundreds of droids, including R2-D2, with 31 interchangeable parts. Swinging Crane transports parts through factory as Jawas supervise production. Or get the new Star Wars radio-controlled Jawa Sandcrawler. Oh my gosh! A working replica of the Tatooine Desert Transporter of the Scavenger Jawas. Capture the droids, place them inside, then the wireless radio control lets you move the sand crawler and take them away. That's just a small sample of what you can get in this 1979 collection. Only from Kenner. And final geek fact. Simon Maddox, a military man turned mercenary, 
was selected by the Roxon Oil Company to be a special agent in covert operations. Sent to the mutagenic laboratory of Roxon's subsidiary Brand Corporation, Maddox underwent extensive conditioning to increase his strength and endurance, and surgery to implant a miniature anti-gravity generator in the base of his spine. Given a special battle suit with electrical offensive weaponry, Maddox was assigned the code name Killer Shrike. Shrike wears a head-to-toe suit made of insulated mesh alloys that gives him superhuman strength, reflexes, stamina, and flight. It also protects him from small caliber firearms. He also wears wrist talons with twin power blasters and curved titanium talons. The bracelets also discharge a high frequency bolt of electricity, reaching 120,000 volts and can reach up to 50 feet. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining me for another Daily Comic and Collectible, and I hope to see you again Tuesday. This is Cat Fan Comics Man, and I'll catch you on the flip. Over and out. <laughs>